awful load of dark angels about these days. I think they found me. <laughs> Hello, fellow fresh avatars. Autumn Witch here, don't worry. I haven't been cancelled. You're thinking of the BBC show Autumn Watch, which is basal, bestial, perverse voyeurism, whereas my stuff is... moving on. So this isn't speed painting exactly. I'm not sure if it even counts as slap chop or whatever the cool kids are saying these days. This is more of a make efficient plan, follow said plan, profit type things. I have 2000 points of white scars sat about built and unprimed and in the future I shall try a painting challenge with them. But I have a few dark angels lying about unpainted and they are quite omnipresent around 40k at the moment so I shall test my plan on these poor unfortunate Deathwing. How long will it take to get them tabletop ready? Let's find out. This system is very shade and contrast heavy, so to get the most out of them, the off-white prime gets a heavy dry brush with Vallejo Air Dead White before going over the armour with Seraphim Sepia. As you can see, this is not only the old formula Seraphim Sepia, but the old pot size too. Two important things here. One, don't let it pool. This is as much to get an even stain on the armour as it is to shade the recesses. And two, make sure it is very, very dry before the next step. The next step being a second all over dry brush with Vallejo Air Bone White. Already they are starting to take on that traditional Deathwing look. I have a squad of Deathwing Knights too. Perhaps if this works I'll paint them up as well. Maybe even start an army. You do not need to buy a Dark Angel's army. You have too many space marines already. You do not want the grey plastic, you want the painted minis. Do not let the ease with which you can get more grey plastic distract you from painting the minis. Well, that's me told. Now we come to the contrast paints. I chose five. Orc Flesh, Skeleton Horde, Blood Angels Red, Black Legion and Basilicanum Grey. This for me is the most challenging part. Contrast paints sometimes pull away from the surface as they dry, leaving the layer beneath poking through. This means you have to cover it well, but then you run the risk of overspill onto other parts of the model. I accept that this will happen and I have Vallejo Bone White and Seraphim Sepia close to hand for the required cleanup. I guess this is just the challenge of painting light coloured armour. I'm looking at you, White Scars. I try to walk the line between variation and uniformity. Whilst all the chapter symbols and gun casings get Blood Angels Red and the chest aquila and cables get Orc Flesh Green, I switched up the colours around the ropes and tassels for a subtle variance. Sticking to these five paints for this part of the project gives me that balance where I can switch things up but still have the unit looking cohesive. Limiting one's palette is a handy tool if you wish to paint things fast. The stone parts and icons get Basilicanum Grey, the scroll work gets Skeleton Horde, and the joints and feathers get Black Legion. One exception was mixing Orc Flesh with Militarum Green for the Sergeant's Tabard. As it crosses over his chest Aquila, I felt a more subtle difference between the two greens would look better. Once more, these are set aside to dry because the next step is even more dry brushing. The last dry brushing stage, I promise, involves taking Vallejo Dead White 
and going over everything quite lightly. Don't worry about going over the painted details with this, it gives a nice highlight that can be toned back down. Once more, I go around the model, tidying up with whatever paint I need. The details get a glazing with their original contrast colours, which now have an even more striking highlight, thanks to the dead white dry brush. For the feathers though, I grab Gilliman Blue Glaze, which GW discontinued a while ago. If it comes down to it, I could probably find something similar, but I am rather fond of this glaze. This goes over the feathers, giving them a subtle blue tint. Whilst tidying up, I paint the eyes and lenses with dead white too, to give a bright base colour to the colours that I will be painting them. Up until now, I have left out the metallics. I'm not brave enough for NMM, and true metallics are quicker. Vallejo Chainmail Silver goes over the weapons, and any small details on the mini, such as any vents or ports. Once the metallics are dry, I give them a coat with basilicon and grey contrast. Whilst that is drying, I paint in the eyes and the lenses. With the eyes, I go in with Scale 75 Ink Tense Red for a bright pop. The lenses will get Talisar Blue for a contrast with the other colours. You see I leave a blank space in the top right corner where the white is to give it that little shiny effect look thing. Stuff. Words. I make no secret of the fact that I find edge highlighting tedious. The amount of dry brushing so far attests to that, but I do respect it and I can't argue with its results. There is no need to get super into it though. I run bone white around the edges of the armour panels, I add wire stacker red on the red areas, and some storm host silver over the metal highlights. This can all be come back to at a later date should I want to improve them, but for a tabletop ready unit, they're looking pretty good. At least I think so. Now there's one more thing to do. And that's the basing. I want them to fit in with my forest terrain, so I paint the top of the base with oak brown from the army painter. Then I give each base a decent coat of Geek Gaming Fast Drying Basing Glue, followed by a dunk in Geek Gaming Base Ready Scrublands Mix. I give them an hour to set, then I carefully drop a little super glue over the mix. This soaks in nicely, but I am mindful to not cause overspills or oversaturation. I find that with a cautious hand, this can be a decent alternative to mixing up some sealant for such a, a small amount of surface. So before we look at the end result, how long did this take me? Well, time spent at the actual desk was about 4 hours, but that doesn't take into account drying time. That would add around 2 more hours for the paint, but the basing glue needed overnight to set properly. But what do you folks think? Is this a good tabletop standard for the time taken? Anyway, before I show you some glamour shots, please give this video a like if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, especially that white scars speed painting thing that I am dreading. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Bleeding Tree Gaming.